최근 미국은 한국과 일본의 화해를 굉장히 원하는 것으로 보입니다. 때문에 우리 윤 대통령도 일본에게 계속적인 화해 제스처를 취하고 있는데요. 미국이 그렇도록 한국과 일본의 화해 내지는 협력을 원하는 이유는 무엇이라고 보십니까? I think the Biden administration is motivated to try to bring about further reconciliation between South Korea and Japan out of the recognition that true reconciliation allows deeper partnership. We now live in a world in which, as I've mentioned, geopolitical rivalry and competition have returned. South Korea and Japan are among America's closest allies. We face mutual challenges and we can do more together. And I think if there's an underlying theme to the Biden administration's approach to foreign policy is that there is great strength in numbers. We are better together. Now that doesn't mean that the Biden administration always lives up to the standard it proclaims for ourselves. I'm sure we can go through lots of issues, most notably the Inflation Reduction Act that would alienate uh, or anger many South Koreans. But I think the idea for the Biden administration is it wants to deepen and strengthen the ties with its friends and the ties that its friends have with each other. And reconciliation can be quite powerful. And I will note the power of the reconciliation between the United States and Japan, uh, which has made possible uh, collaboration that I think if you were to ask people in the 1940s would have seemed unthinkable. 한국은 경제적으로 미국에 굉장히 의존도가 높기도 하지만 마찬가지로 중국에도 의존도가 굉장히 높습니다. 그런데 미국과 중국의 갈등 또한 세계의 그런 블록화들을 통해서 한국은 굉장히 좀 고달파지는 것 같다라는 생각이 드는데요. 전문가로서의 의견은 어떠신가요? Well, let me broaden the question out, and it gets back to one of the themes of the Kim Dae-jung Peace Forum 2023, which is again. In the early post-Cold War era, so much seemed possible. And in particular, the belief was that if countries could be encouraged to become part of the international economic system, they would benefit, their neighbors would benefit. And that has been largely true. I mean, the economic growth in South Korea uh, over the past three decades has been remarkable. One of the consequences of that is countries have all become more interdependent. Korea sells a lot to China, imports a lot from China. It's not just South Korea. The United States has deep interdependencies with China and likewise. And, and the, the great problem with the resurgence of geopolitical rivalry is now all of a sudden that global economic interdependence which was seen as a great strength that allowed us to produce things faster, more efficiently, more cheaply, is now seen as a vulnerability uh, because of the risk that countries will close you out of their markets or not. And obviously for a country like South Korea is in a delicate position because you are very close to China. Uh, you have strong security ties to the United States. And there is a concern, how do you balance uh, those competing interests? You obviously don't want to uh, annoy or alienate China, given that you share the same neighborhood. On the other hand, it's very clear that Chinese behavior threatens core Korean economic uh, issue, interests and values. And I think South Korea, under successive administrations, have wisely tried to steer a proper course. Uh, and it is, but it's a very challenging environment in which to be asked to navigate uh, because you are to some extent dependent upon the decisions that are made in other capitals. 김대중 대통령으로부터 지혜를 빌릴 때인 것 같다라고 말씀을 하셨는데요. 구체적으로 어떤 지혜를 말씀하시는 건지 우리는 어떤 방향으로 나아가야 될지에 대해서 설명 좀 부탁드리겠습니다. Well, I am going to resist the temptation to tell Koreans the choices they should make. I don't think that is my place. Uh, 
What I will say is that you know, my takeaway from the conversations over the past two days, as people have reflected upon the wisdom, the thought, the choices, the actions of President Kim, that two things stand out. One is the belief that it's essential in tough times not to give in to pessimism, not to think that because it is dark now, it will be even darker tomorrow. And indeed, that's where it becomes most important to stand up, to believe that in essence, we are not corks in the current of history, that we have human agency, that we can shape the world in which we live. Second major takeaway, and I think President Kim, and before he was president as well, demonstrated this, it is worthwhile to take risks for peace. You know, there is it, the safest position sometimes in politics in any country is always to opt for that we should get tough solution, to say that we should spend more on defense, we should talk harsher, we should take a harder line. What can be very difficult to do is to resist those currents, especially in a time like today where nationalism is resurgent. To say, as challenging as it is, as difficult as it is, I am willing to take a chance for peace. Again, to go back to President Kennedy, to say, I'm not going to negotiate out of fear, but I'm not going to be afraid to negotiate. And I think that's a very powerful takeaway that I would like to see more world leaders embrace. Because unfortunately, the currents push in an opposite direction.